Let's start to understand MFAA better by understanding how AA works. This image shows a grid of 25 pixels that represents a very small area of your screen. If a game draws a straight line on this grid, the GPU must determine the correct color to use for each pixel. The way the GPU does that is by sampling. And sampling means that we pick some location, which in this case is the very center of the grid, to use as the test location to determine if a geometric shape intersects a pixel and should thus color it. You can see that we get a very jagged edge when we use one sample since each pixel needs to make a binary decision about coverage. Traditional AA improves this a lot by taking more than one sample per pixel. In this image, we're showing two sample points per pixel. Now for each pixel, the GPU calculates two coverage points. If a particular geometry covers only one of the two sample points, then the final pixel color is of course the average of the two colors. This technique dramatically improves image quality by reducing jaggies, but the cost can be high as now the GPU needs to do more calculations on each frame. MFAA dramatically improves this by recognizing that the averaging that MSAA does per pixel can actually be done over time. In the first frame, let's assume that the following grid of sample positions is used. You can see the image here is similar to what no AA looks like. Now in the next frame, we change the sample positions. You can see how the generated image is slightly different from the prior frame, with just a few pixels changing from light to dark and vice versa. We can then run a sophisticated filter on the GPU to combine the series of frames and deliver an image that's nearly identical to 2x MSAA. The great part about this tech, though, is that the delivered performance is nearly identical to no AA. This technology is accessible in NVIDIA's control panel and can be enabled or disabled per game as desired.